Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to learn how we can implement search functionality in our application. For now, let's see we have the user table and whenever we search something here, it should filter all the search query that we have. Let's start. If I come to my application, this is the search form we have at the top of our application. This is in master.blade.php. It means it is not going to be in the JavaScript or view component. So let's see how we are going to do this one. Of course, there are many ways you can do this one. The reason I use this one as a global uh, part of our application is because I just want to teach you some new techniques, how you can access data from here and your component and all sort of stuff. Also, this is going to be available in all your component. That's why this is going to be a share area and you can use it anywhere in your application for now if i open the app.js what i'm going to do is i'm going to write a comma here and the data for our main this is of course this is uh, the main instance of the view it is going to look for the app which is the id for the page here this is going to be the main instance for this is this is going to have uh, let's say the data is going to have one property called search for now it is equal to empty the reason I do this one because later we can take this data whatever user type here and then we can search that in the database and then we can query back the information I will connect it the way you connect this you use v model of course here is the input and you can write v model search for now whatever you write here you should be uh, able to access this one so if i come here let's refresh the page first now i will come to the view uh, tab here to see if we have access to this one if you click on the root here of course you have the search bar here the search property and if you write something it is going to reflect here this is our search query for now what else we are going to do we say if someone types something and press enter, how would you do that one? Or this this button, of course, the, the type of button, we don't need. And we can write a uh, click event for this one. And we say if someone click on this one, what we can do, we can search. We can just write anything here. If someone click on you, just write a common function here. Let's say search. Or search it, whatever you can call it. For now, we are not going to do anything, but for this one, eh, we can write something like at key up. What this is going to do, this is going to listen for the key up and it is going to fun uh, search for a function. Let's say search it. Let's have the same name because we are going to create the, the same function now. This is going, what this is going to do, this is going to say if anyone start typing something, just call the function search it and now we should have this function in our application okay of course it is going to be in the view and we write as methods I'm going to write it here this function for now it does not do anything but let's see if we can console dot lock searching and let's see if this is going to work for now if i save it and i will come to my application hard reload the page and let's wait for the page to load we are in the console let's see if this is going to work so i'll come here and start typing yeah it is going to give us searching and as soon as i type it is going to search what we are going to do is if someone is start typing, it should send a HTTP request to the server and it should fetch the new information from the database. But if someone is typing like this, for every key they are pressing, they are going to send another request, which is not what we want. So what I am going to do is for now, at least for now, but later I will create another video. I will show you how you can pause the key like uh, in every three seconds it should send the request. And if someone is start typing, after three seconds they start typing or two seconds, maybe one second, it should send the, the request to the server for now what i am going to do is the good solution is just come here and press dot enter what this is going to do it is going to say if someone is start typing and press enter then call the function 
that is better if I save it this time and refresh the page and let's try this time we are in the console and if I start typing nothing happen and if I press enter yes searching searching oops this is going to submit our form so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the form because we don't need the form for now so if I save it this time if I refresh it, it it should not have to search anything now we have the full search bar here of course you can customize it and if I start typing press enter yeah it is going to say searching and if I press enter again again and again and again it is going to work this is better now when someone press enter then it should send the HTTP request to the server or something like that for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire an event so this event should uh, let's say should announce to all components that someone is going to search for something so what is that that event if you have follow if you are following the tutorial series you know that we have a fire global keyword here you know the fire it is we have written that one all the way up let me see where is the fire you know how the fire is going to work this is a new instance of view when you use this one let me just search for fire yeah here is the fire and we just uh, assign it to the window object and then if anywhere in our application we can use the fire so now if I come scroll and uh, scroll down here we can say image fire image searching now you can what you can do is you can pass a keyword here now what this is going to do this is going to create a custom event for now if someone is going to call this function it is going to create an event called searching and now anywhere in your application you can listen for the searching and if this happen we we are going to send the HTTP request to the server for now we just save it and i will come to my component let's say for the user we have the user here what i'm going to do is i'm going to listen for the event in our created function here you know how you can listen here is one of the example we have used you can use fire and then dollar sign on on you can write searching and on searching what you can do is you can uh, run a function or you can you can use let, let's say this is the old javascript but in the new javascript version or e6 you can use the arrow function you can remove the keyword the function keyword here and then you can write the arrow this is going to be the same but a little shorter now what it is going to do it is going to uh, listen for the searching and if it happen then send an HTTP request to the server and get the information of course we know how to use get we are going to use Axios and the Axios is going to send an HTTP request to the server let's say it's going to search for API slash they say find user for now and what else we need of course when you send it to the server especially when it is a get request you should send the information as well let's say q or query whatever i will just write it q and we just say plus query now we should have a variable called query what this is going to do Ooh, okay we say let query equal to for now it is equal to empty what but this data should be equal to this data but we don't have that data here this is a view component that data or, or that uh, information was in our app.js here how you can access this one in view.js if you want to access the data from the parent which is the app.js what you can do is you can write this dot dollar sign parent dot search no this is going to take information from the root instance of our application which is search and then it will store that in the query now what we can do is we can just uh, put the query in the url and we send the request to the server of course the request to the server will either respond to then or it will respond to cost cost is for error then is for success and when it was successful one more parameter we are going to call a function 
and of course this is going to contain all of our the data that is going to come from the server and if it is unsuccessful again we can do something here for now it is not going to do anything but you can let's say show an error or like this one you can just display something was wrong or something like that for now what we can do is we say if the data was successful what you can do you can write this dot users equal to data dot data you know what i mean by this dot user this dot user is equal to the users we have here and the data this data is going to be the information that is coming from the server after we send the request for now i will save it here but this is not going to do anything because we do not have such a url if i come yeah we do not have such a url but for now if i refresh the page and let's see if it is working or not we will come on the network tab and listen for the things we are going to do we type something we press enter it is going to send the request to this url and it is 200 for now it is successful but it will display the the page information here because we do not have such a route it is not give us giving us an error so i will come to the route api okay here is one we have forget and what i'm going to do is i'm going to say this is going to listen for the find user url and it is going to call a function called search which is going to be in the user controller this is fine if i save it for now i have to open the user controller so in the user controller here i have already written a function called search what this is going to do is basically this is the code that it is going to do it is going to get the request make sure you put the slash in front of it and it is using the request get it is going to take the value of the queue if i come here the reason we put the queue is here it is going to be in the url that's why we say get it is not displaying here in the URL because it is an uh, this it is an Ajax request. Of course, it is in the behind the scene. It is going to get that information and store it in the search, and then I I will loop that and I will say go to the user where I call a function here and we pass the query. The query is going to query all the, our information. Like how it is going to work is it is going to say that. The query is going to be if name is equal to the search, if we put the search here, or, or where email address, or where type, or where whatever you can use. You can just combine or where, or where here. So let me put it in another line, something like that. And you can, let's say, duplicate this line, or where, let's say, type is equal to the phrase search here. This is how it is going to work. At the end, it will store it to the user, and it will return it back so for now yeah it should not be here this is what we want if i save it this is what we need in the server so if i hard reload and see if it is going to work or not by default it should display all the information for now if this time i write something let's say admin press enter it send the request but we have 500 error here so let's see what is the error they say undefined variable users hmm where is that it is of course in our php code here they say users we return the user they say if you have get queue mm, maybe we do not have that one so what is wrong here let's see if i come to the user we have the queue and we have the query everything is just fine for now okay they send the request to the find user which is our api here find user and it is going to call the search function so let's see if i come to the user here is the thing we did wrong it should be equal to q now we didn't put the equal sign here so if i save this time we come here refresh the page this time it should work just fine if not we will just debug it uh, so let's try something like admin we have so many admins here so if i press enter it is going to yeah it, this was successful and for now it is showing only admin here now if i come here and say add press enter 
still we have two user and if I press dot com enter yeah these are all the people who have the dot com if we say uh, at me and press enter is going to write only people who have the email address with at me and if I say which one is a little bit unique okay let's say teacher teach no teach teach yeah teacher or teach this is going to work just fine so i hope it has been informative for you if you have any question feel free to ask below the video and don't remember in the next video i will show you how you can just type instantly whatever you type without pressing the enter it should like display the information here so that is what we do in the next video but feel free to give it a try if you can mm, there are uh, uh, so many other things i should cover and next up we will i will do a little video on how you can print a page like you have a button you click on that one you can print a pdf or any type of document you want that is very important like uh it is a busy things but i will cover how you can do that one so i hope it has been informative for you if you have any question as always feel free to ask below the video and i will try to answer them but don't remember to google it before asking because so many of your questions have been already asked and that is what you can find in google and later if i was not present you can have the skill of searching on google so thank you for watching and see you in the next video